So you're a design professional or visual artist and you need a 3D model for a project or client. You know how to work in 2D, whether that's creating a hand sketch, a digital image, or even a CAD file or PDF. But how do you go from that to this? Hey guys, Alex here from Blender Academy. We've helped thousands of professionals like you learn the right way to tackle this part of the creative process and avoid the common frustrating mistakes that often trip people up along the way. I get it, building a 3D model from 2D references can be a daunting task. And if you're like many of my students, you're probably asking yourself, where do I even start? So today, I'm gonna to share with you the five key things you need to know to start creating a 3D model from 2D references in Blender. But first, a quick warning. This video isn't for beginners who are completely new to Blender. You should at least be familiar with the concepts we cover in our Getting Started with Blender video. I've added a link to that video in the description. All right, let's bring up the list and dive right into number one, import a 2D image. So you'll be creating a new Blender model from scratch. And sure, you could toggle back and forth and back and forth between your reference image and your new model, trying to make sure you translate every detail correctly and don't leave anything out. But that would be a slow, inefficient process that would likely result in mistakes that could end up costing you a ton of time to try to fix later. Instead, you can actually import your 2D images directly into your Blender modeling space. So you'll be able to quickly and accurately trace and build right on top of your image. Let's talk about how to do this with a simple example, but keep in mind, you can follow this process with any type of 2D image you need to reference. In our example, say we've got a top-down or plan view image of a piece of furniture we want to model in Blender. The first thing we'll want to do is start with a view that matches the view in the image. So for this example, we pick the Z direction, either by pressing 7 on the number pad or clicking Z in the navigation gizmo. Next, press Shift A and pick the option for Image Reference. Then pick the image file and click Load Reference File. All right, now you've imported your reference file and it's facing the correct direction. You're ready for the next tip. Number two, set the correct scale. Before you dive in and start building your 3D model from your reference image, you'll need to make sure it's set to the correct scale. That way, everything you model off of it will be the correct size and not way too big or way too small. How do you do that? First, I always recommend quickly checking your file's unit settings to make sure they're set up how you want them. To do that, click on the scene properties. Under units, I've got my unit system set to imperial and inches, but you can use whatever you need for your model. Once you've got your unit set correctly, select the imported image. Press S and you can scale the image based on the underlying grid. If you need to move the image, you can press G and move it where you want it to be, then click to set it down. I always recommend scaling your image before you build anything on top of it, even if it's just a conceptual sketch or rough idea. That way, if you need to move or adjust things in precise ways later, you'll avoid the headache that comes with things not being sized correctly. So set your scale now. Your future self will thank you. Thanks, man. I got you. All right, you're all set to start creating your 3D model on top of your reference image. But hold on, since we're building in 3D, often you'll have multiple images of different angles that you'll need to reference. That's where the next tip comes in. Number three, import additional reference angles. To model something accurately, you'll often need to import elevations, sections, and details into Blender as well. In order to do that, you'll follow a similar set of steps to what we just did, only you'll start off by selecting the view that matches your additional reference image. For instance, if we had a side or elevation view to import, we'd press one on our number pad or click Y on the navigation gizmo. Then follow the same steps to import the image. Then scale it, only this time, you'll wanna be sure that you're moving and scaling the new image relative to the original image you already brought in. Ideally, pick a spot in one image that you can match up with a spot in the other image. And you can keep doing this for as many images and angles as you'd like. All right, you've got your reference images imported, scaled, and in the right place. Only now, you're probably thinking, Hey, all these images are in the way of me actually modeling anything. That's where the next tip comes in. Number four, show and hide only what you need. But real quick, before we get too much further, we're going over a lot of ground in this video. So I've gone ahead and put together a free set of notes that will make it easy for you to review everything we're covering. I've added a link to download them in the description. All right, back to the list. As you build off of your reference images, there are times where you'll wanna see one angle in order to model things accurately while hiding others. There are also times where you'll want all of the reference images hidden in order to get a clearer view of what you're working on. Luckily, Blender has a built-in feature that allows you to easily set up your images so that they only appear when you need them and get out of the way when you don't. Here's how. Click on one of the images to select it, then click on the object data properties for that image. 
Uncheck the box next to Perspective. The image will disappear, but don't worry. That's actually what we want, as we'll see in a moment. Now repeat the same steps for the other images you imported. Select the image, and in the Object Data Properties, uncheck the box next to Perspective. OK, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, now I can't see any of my reference images. But here's the trick. Try pressing 7 on your number pad, or click Z on the navigation gizmo, and the plan view reference image appears. Now try orbiting to a perspective view. It disappears. Try the same for the Y or X axes. When you're in those views, the corresponding elevation images you brought in will appear. And again, Blender automatically hides them when you orbit to a perspective view. In this way, you can quickly switch views, referencing your 2D source images to make sure your 3D model is accurate from every angle, but then also have the freedom to work on your model in a perspective view without the reference images getting in the way. Pretty cool, right? Like that tip? Don't forget to give this video a like. All right, we've made it to our last tip. Number five, how to work with different 2D file types. If you're a creative professional, you know you'll often need to import other 2D reference files beyond the types of images we've been covering. The two most common roadblocks people hit with this are when they need to import PDFs or CAD files. Let's quickly discuss how to deal with both. First, importing PDFs. Unfortunately, Blender doesn't allow you to import PDF files. This can drive some people crazy as PDFs are a common file type for reference material. But here are a couple quick workarounds if you're facing this issue. One method is to convert the PDF to an image file such as a PNG or JPEG. If you use Adobe Acrobat, there is an option to export your PDF to an image under File, Export to, Image. Mac users can also export a PDF as an image file using the Preview app under File, Export. A second workaround is to take a screenshot. On both PCs and Macs, grab a screenshot of the PDF. Screenshots are automatically saved in an image file format, which you can then import into Blender following the same steps we already covered. And what about importing a CAD file? If you're looking to import a CAD file from a 2D drafting program like AutoCAD, you'll see that by default, Blender doesn't allow it. However, this option is available for free by using an add-on. Add-ons can be thought of like plugins, extensions, or additional scripts that extend Blender's functionality. We won't go too deep into add-ons in this video. For now, just know that you have the ability to add the option for importing CAD files by going to the Edit menu and selecting Preferences, Add-ons. Then search for AutoCAD and check the box next to Import AutoCAD DXF Format option. Close the Blender Preferences window, and now when you go to the Import menu, you'll see the option to import a .dxf file. Let's quickly try it with our same furniture example, since there are a couple of additional things you should know when importing a CAD file for reference. As we did earlier, we'll press 7 on our number pad, or click Z in the navigation gizmo to get to a top-down view. Then import the .dxf file. Note that we can now see the elements of our imported file listed in the outliner. Next, we'll want to check that our imported CAD file is scaled correctly. After double-checking our file's unit settings, let's measure something in the imported drawing to make sure it's correct. Now, one of the great things about using a CAD file as a reference is that Blender can snap to or automatically detect the endpoints and edges in your file. Let's try it. Click on the Measure tool, then hold down the Control key to enable snapping. Click and hold down on one vertex and drag your mouse to the opposite vertex. Let go once you snap to it to see if the measurement is correct. What if your CAD file didn't import at the correct scale? We can quickly solve that with math. Let's say our measurement came out to 12 feet, but that segment should only be 3 feet. That means we'll want to scale down our reference CAD file by a factor of 0.25, or 25%, so that everything in the file measures correctly. To do that, select your reference CAD file in the outliner by clicking on the first item, holding Shift, then clicking on the last item. That will select everything in between. Press S for scale, then type the scale factor, 0.25, and press Enter, and it will scale everything together. Lastly, we'll need to apply the scale. Press Control A and select Scale to apply it. Check the measurement now, and it should be 3 feet. All right, you made it through the five key things you need to know to start creating a 3D model from 2D references in Blender. And now you're set up to trace, build on, and adapt your 2D files into a 3D model as you see fit. Of course, there's a lot that goes into building a great 3D model on top of your 2D references, but that's too much to get into in one video. However, if you're just getting started with Blender and can't afford to waste time or pick up bad habits, I recommend checking out our video course library, where you'll find courses covering everything you need to learn to begin creating 3D models in Blender the right way. Head over to our website to learn more and try our courses for free. And if you're not ready to try our courses just yet, be sure to check out this video. Until next time, happy blending!
Thanks, man. 